Example 3. On the argand diagram, sketch each of the following subsets. Okay, the, the argument of Z, or the angle that Z makes with the positive direction of the x-axis is pi on 4. In this one, we're saying that the angle which Z plus 2 makes with the positive direction of the x-axis is minus pi on 3. That's a little bit more tricky. This one here is actually going to be a region because we've got less than or equal to pi on 4. Now again, this should not be on the agenda, but I'm just going to put it in just in case. Uh, just in case when they pull a Swifty on you, okay? Let's see how we go. Part A. There is our argand diagram, and this is what we're looking for. And I want to point out to you that the open dot here is required because an angle cannot be formed at the origin itself, okay? We're traveling away from the origin to get our path of points, okay? It's a ray. It has an arrowhead here to indicate the direction in which we're traveling. And the open dot is necessary because you can't form any kind of a ray or a line with just one point being the origin itself, yeah? Now this one here is a little bit tricky because we've got this Z plus 2 in here, which makes it all a little bit of a conundrum. However, it's very, very easy if you just use the Wolfman technique, which I'm about to show you. So what we do is we let whatever is in that bracket equal U, okay? And everything becomes clear. If we let u equal z plus 2, we know then what we're really dealing with here is that argument of u is minus pi on 3, isn't it? Yes, it is. So there's an argand diagram to represent that, but we've got u here instead of z, all right? Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? We go in the clockwise direction here. We've got an angle of pi on 3 in the clockwise direction. Now, all we've got to do now is work out how to get from u back to z. And it's very, very simple. We know that u, according to our definition, is z plus 2. Therefore, z would be u minus 2. In other words, we have to subtract 2 from every value of u to obtain the corresponding value of z. So everything's going to have to move backwards by 2 units. And there it is. Isn't that ingenious? Do you like that? It's very, very nice. And of course, this red dotted line here is x equals minus 2. Woohoo! Pretty marvellous, isn't it? Okay, let's move on. Part C. Now, this is a region, this one. There's our argand diagram. And <laughs> look at that. Oh, dear. What is that? Well, first of all, this green ray here represents the argument of z is equal to pi on 4. And, of course, we need everything equal to or less than pi on 4. Now, all of this around here. If we were to rotate that green ray in our minds around like this, you would realize that we were getting angles less than pi on 4, wouldn't you? Right around here, 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 right around here. Except that, of course, we don't include the x-axis to the left of the origin here because that represents, according to our naming convention, where the argument of z equals plus pi. So we just put a little dotted line there to indicate that that's not included in our region. Okay, it's pretty nifty, isn't it? That's the answer. Now, example four. We have to show that the locus defined as W equals that thing is a circle and find the coordinates of the center and the radius of the circle. Now, let's do this the algebraic way because there's absolutely no way that I know of doing this uh, intuitively with the geometry. It just doesn't really gel with what it would be. Yeah. All right, there we go. And we're just going to go through the routine as we've been doing in previous examples. Now we're going to group the reals and the imaginary bits. And now we're going to put the distance as a square rooty thing like that. You get this, don't you? Now we're going to square both sides, remembering to square this two as well. There you are. Now let's just simplify that a little bit. I've multiplied out the brackets here and here. Now I'm going to get rid of this bracket here. There, okay? Now it's time to mop up a bit and see what we've got. Simplify this. Uh, the fours go. Very good. And then we've got this here, okay? After bringing everything over to the left-hand side. Now, what do we do with that? I think we should multiply through by minus one. It's a good idea. And then we're going to have to complete the square to get 
linear factors with x and y squared here. As you can see already, we've got a 3 here and a 3 here in terms of in front of these x squared and y squared terms, which means we're going to get a circle. So we're already well on the way to victory. Okay, now this we know how to do. We've done this for lots and lots of previous examples. Uh, we're going to put the 3 out in front of the bracket here and the 3 out in front of the bracket here. And we're left with this inside the brackets and we're going to complete the square inside the brackets. Yeah. So what do we do? We take this coefficient, we halve it and then square the result. And then we minus it away again so that we don't change the value of what we've got in this equation. Same thing in this bracket here. Half of 8 over 3 is 4 over 3. Square that, we get 16 over 9, then subtract again. Now, what we have to do now is get these negative terms outside the brackets because we only want this, this, and this inside the brackets because they are what makes up our perfect squares, okay? Now, the little danger there is you have to be very careful to remember to multiply by 3 when you take these negative terms outside the brackets, don't you? Yes, you do. Uh, that's a big trap, and a lot of people fall for it as well. Okay, now this is looking pretty nice now. I think we just better simplify that a little bit and we'll take these two negative terms over the other side and we've got that. Now it's obviously a circle, but let's divide by three both sides and this is what we get. Isn't this absolutely incredible? This is a circle, ladies and gentlemen, with the center at minus two thirds and minus four thirds and the radius is the square root of 20 over 9, which works out to be 2 root 5 over 3. So there you are. This was indeed a circle. We've shown it. Let's read the question again. We have to show that it is a circle. Find the coordinates of the centre and the radius of the circle. We've done all that. We're laughing. And yes, we saw the light. And we're very, very delighted. And we'll see you soon.